Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Rotime Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM, self-explanatory, all the songs are in a Spotify playlist in the link down below, and uh, I thought it was a bit of a slow week, I would say, uh, this week. I think about 19 songs, so let's get into it. With the bad category, songs that I thought were not great, uh, just a reminder, this is my own opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, we've got K391 with Alive. Um, haven't listened to a ton of him as of late, uh, but is he just an Alan Walker clone now that Alan Walker is kind of doing slightly different music. Um, this kind of just sounds like 2015 NCS, and that's about that. You got Chill with Bring It Back, a quick track with minimal, catchy production elements, and uh, yeah, this is the first time in a while that I felt nothing about a song, but in a bad way, where I felt like I didn't feel anything, but I was like, didn't like that I didn't feel anything about it. I don't know, that doesn't make a ton of sense, but my brain feels like that understands it somehow. I, yeah. Not a fan. Then we got Blue Claire with Shake What Yo Mama. Uh, Tech House with not a whole lot going for it. Uh, the continuous ups and downs of the scaling uh, gave the track a sense of repetitiveness that was quite tiring to listen to, actually. So, uh, But then we're moving into the meh category, songs that I thought were pretty meh. Uh, we got Marshmallow and Sudden Death with Ceremony, uh, the strangest collab of the year. Uh, although Marshmallow felt pretty absent from this track, I would say. It seemed like a tame sudden death track, and that's about it. It's like Marshmallow just kind of turned the dial of sudden death down to like a three. Um, it was very odd, and uh, it, in a weird twist of fate, also kind of just felt like a nothing burger of a track. Then we've got Burial with Dream Fear, a 13-minute hardcore breakbeat journey that is quite unsettling, actually. Uh, multiple times throughout this listen, I felt uneasy and as if I was being watched. So, um, hey, if that's your thing, you'll love this. Uh, then we got Wooly and Company with the Thick Boy Mega VIP. Uh, three tracks smashed into one Mega VIP, Wooly and Company. I uh, do a good job of making this one a little bit more memorable, but uh, without them saying what it was about this track, that it was kind of three tracks smashed in one, um, I wouldn't have known because all three drops here are kind of just more or less your stereotypical headbanger dubstep. So um, not too bad, but didn't really uh, grab my attention too much more. Then we got Excision and AT Aliens with uh, Dinosaurs from Outer Space. Uh, fascinating team up for a track, but one that I felt like AT Aliens played a little bit more of a supportive role in rather than a 50 50 split. Uh, Excision's sound is maybe a little bit too dominant on this track in what feels like an unequally weighted production. Um, would have loved to hear more AT Aliens uh, throughout this track. Then we got Tasaki and Godlands with You Want Me 2.0. Uh, didn't mind this remix, just found it a little bit unnecessary. I felt that it didn't really change up the formula enough from the original to really warrant this being a whole new release in itself. So. Then we got Nostalgics uh, featuring Dev with Real Girls. The Star City EP is out now on Monster Cat. And uh, this is a bit of a laid back speed house track with um, a lot of like female empowerment vibes as you get from Nostalgics. I um, thought the production was pretty basic though, and the mixing and the vocals would be a little bit muddy, but overall I did enjoy the vibe of the track. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were uh, pretty good. We got Pnow with All Your Energy, but in bit of an oddball track here, but I love the vibe and playfulness of the production. It's a more commercial-leaning single, but with some jumpy elements to keep it a little bit more engaging for a niche audience like me. Then we got Grey and Sayak Des with Silver Linen. Um, yeah, the Contra EP is out now from Grey, and uh, I hated their last 2020 EP with Dark. Um, like, I literally gave it a zero out of ten, a bowtie zero. I thought it was the worst uh, project I've heard in the 20, 2020s ever. Um, but this one, kind of a bop, not gonna lie. Uh, I think Grey is a bit of on a on a redemption tour for me personally, so uh, this is one that I uh, did enjoy. We got No Mana and SoFi with Digital Friends. Uh, no Mana's most vocal forward track yet. Uh, it's a neat little track with a little more commercial-leaning edge to it. Um, relatively simplistic with the happy-go-lucky sound, but um, probably my least love single, uh, Monster Yet single of No Mana's with this one, but still enjoyed it. We got Nufori featuring Luna Lenta with Leave the World Behind. Uh, Nufori is uh, is the mind behind formerly known as Volant. Uh, has now uh, teamed up with Luna Lenta. They have a couple times for a, a self-described hyper trance single, uh, is what she calls it. And uh, I've followed this new Nefori alias since its inception, and um, I've really enjoyed the kind of unique trance sound to it. Uh, it's like a pseudo uplifting trance sound design with just a heavier kick to it than you would hear normally from uplifting trance. So I enjoyed it. 
Then we've got Wave Dash and Maddion featuring Toro Yimoy with All Your Love. Simple, fun vibe of a track. The most commercial of all Wave Dash and Maddion tracks yet. Um, one that could end up being a huge hit, I think. Um, it sounds like a song that either artist would produce for a pop artist and just have their names on the credits in the end. But um, one that they ended up releasing themselves. So I liked it. Then we got Kill the Noise and Feed Me featuring Tasha Baxter with Mirage. The Matt Zoe remix is what I'm looking at here. The Hollow World reanimated, the, essentially the Hollow World remixes uh, album is out now. And I uh, loved hearing Matt Zoe's take on Mirage here. It's more fleshed out, uh, a bit more of a like Electro House track remix with some uh, old school sounding synths and builds to it that feels very Matt Zoe, uh, one that I quite enjoyed. Then we got Nick Smith with After Party. This one is quick, to the point, and groovy all along the way. Another kind of short Nick Smith song that I would love to hear more of, uh, but one that so easily gets stuck in my head. Then we got Eliminate and Fusi with Get Off the Internet. The Get Off the Internet LP is out now. The debut album from Eliminate. And um, yeah, this track in particular is a mix of bass, trap, and hyperpop that, uh, yeah, I, I did not expect from Eliminate here. Uh, it's a whole new style for him that is working marvelously, I think, on this track in particular. I haven't really been able to dive into the whole album, but I'm really excited to, especially after hearing this one. Um, it's a weird, yeah, pr primarily I would say actually hyperpop, but uh, yeah, it's just an odd one that you're, you gotta go listen to and uh, one that I definitely put a smile on my face. Then we got Snaus with Hold On, a really outstanding future-based track here um, that feels like a hit of primetime 2016-17 Snaus for me. The synth is glassy but not too sharp and the vocal samples keep the track moving. Uh, yeah, this one felt like a, an old-school hit for me that I really enjoyed. And our number one track of the week, my number one track of the week is uh, No K and Cora with Deity. Uh, my favorite Champo season two track yet. Um, crunchy synth drop with divine vocals and clean mixing makes for a very smooth release. So I really enjoyed that. Go listen to that. But other than that, uh, those are the tracks that I wanted to talk about this week in EDM. Uh, all of them are in the description down below or in the Spotify playlist, but I'd love to hear what you have. Um, I'd love to say about these songs in one way or another. But uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Botai Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.